Hi guys. For those who know a bit about historical European arms and armour, you will probably know and heard about this topic a fair amount. But those of you that are concept artists and designers in the film and game industry, this might be a bit of use when you design your characters and costumes. I want to talk about armour and specifically textile armour. This is the bread and butter for pretty much any soldier in the medieval period. This type of armour was widely used and very popular amongst all classes in the medieval world. Today it's popularly called gambeson or simply padded armour. It was used all around the body but what you will be watching me sketch out on this roughly 15th century based soldier are a few variations of padded jackets. I'm not going to be historically accurate, but historically inspired. This does not mean I can go crazy with proportions, but this still must mean that the armour must be functional. I am treating this as something that would be forwarded to a costume department in the film industry to be worn by an extra or a minor character. This padded garment was usually quilted with layers of linen and perhaps silk if it could be afforded. Gambeson is an effective armour. Made correctly, it can help resist cuts and some thrusts and some projectiles, depending on the type of arrowhead or maybe spearhead. Of course, it did not make the user invulnerable, but it was a great basis for most medieval soldiers and knights. It was also worn over suits of armours, and these were called jupons. This provided a little more protection on the torso and was also an area to show off the coat of arms. The Black Prince's jupon that was hung over his burial effigy is a good example of this. When designing a character wearing a gambeson, remember to check out how people used to wear it in the medieval period and how it was constructed. They would often be dyed into bright colours and have highly decorated fringes even the common soldiers could afford this. You can literally go nuts on all the different quilting patterns and shapes. Gambesons are such a diverse garment, so try not to go for a plain beige simple padded jack, although they did exist. The medieval people had a fashion sense and imagination, just like all of us today. You might notice that I am not going to include any buckles to fasten the gambesons. That is because it was rarely done in the past. You really want to put buckles and belts that fasten a belt for suspension system for swords or scabbards and fastening plate armour. The belt buckles are part of the bling and that will want to be seen. So what I have done is use lacing and buttons to fasten the garments and it was probably a little bit more comfortable. This also would have been cheaper to produce. Another thing I am keeping in mind is how someone would move in this garment. Extra material would be needed under the arms to allow for the arms to be raised without moving the fabric on the torso. The arm holes should also be small so that the sides of the garment do not lift when the arms are moving. There would also be a small bulge on the elbows to allow for extra movement on the forearms. These gambesons should fit snug to the body, however also allowing movement when it's needed. I am treating this like a tailored suit. Another detail to note is that the garment has an almost wasp-like silhouette where it cuts in around the natural waist. You can see this a lot today in female fashion to emphasise the female figure. However, in this case, it's allow for easy movement of the torso. I will colour these sketches in to give them a bit of life and I hope you have learned a little bit of the fundamentals of gambesons and their requirements to be functional. I might do another one of these types of videos in the future just to spread the knowledge about functional armour. I hope you have a good day and I shall see you on the next one.